are saying to the human race for the first time, we are not alone. We're definitely not alone. Hello there, I'm Bryce Zabel, and you're listening to Need to Know. And uh, as you recall from our last uh, podcast, uh, we had to mention that Ross wasn't with us. He was on assignment. And I'm happy to say that that part has been fixed. Ross may still be on assignment, and he is in Paris, France, but he's with us today. Ross, welcome back. We missed you a lot. Tell me what you've been up to. Oh, boy, Bryce. What what a few weeks. It's um, Can I just say for a moment? Let's just stop for a moment sure. and think about the fact that you and I both know what we're about to talk about. Right. I think this is the beginning of a very important moment in history. I really do. I don't think it's the moment, but I think it's a tipping point, a slow movement towards an admission by the US government of things that seem unimaginable. So what have I been doing? Well, we're actually pre-recording this because I'm going to be on the move when this goes to air. But what we do know is that there is going to be an article appearing in the debrief written by Leslie Kane and Ralph Blumenthal, which I hope will rock Washington, the intelligence community and the Department of Defense right to its socks. It's the revelations of a hugely important intelligence community insider, a guy called David Grush, who until early April was a very senior member of the intelligence community. And Bryce, as you know, because you've been very much part of this, you've been very much a good mentor to me throughout all of this. Dave and I have been talking for some time and I have the television interview with Dave Grush, which will be going to air later this week. And you'll see, hopefully, in this program, the News Nation TV promotional teasers that are advertising this forthcoming interview. He's a decorated U.S. veteran and a former high-ranking intelligence officer at the Pentagon. And now, for the first time on camera, He's blowing the whistle on something extraordinary. There's a sophisticated disinformation campaign. What our government is hiding from you and the world. As fantastical as that sounds, it's true. What is the truth about UFOs? In a worldwide television exclusive, he talks to News Nation. We are not alone. Sunday at 9, 8 central. I think what Mr. Grush has to say is quite momentous. Uh, it's, it's big. And uh, I think we have the beginning of what I believe will be a trail of whistleblowers, good men and women, who are now coming forward to talk about what they know about, incredible as it may seem, a non-human intelligence that's been engaging with this planet for many, many years, and incredibly even further, the fact that the United States government really is in possession of retrieved non-human technology. So that's what I've been doing. <laughs> yeah, there's a little to think about. I want to thank you for the way you started it, because th that actually describes my feelings. I met uh, Dave Grush through you uh, almost a month ago. Uh, met him twice, had lunch with him, thanks to you again. Um, but I have to say, I've spent many nights and days in the last month where I kind of sit there and drift off because I'm thinking, wow, we've been doing this for a long time as a need to know podcast uh, and, and YouTube channel. But I've been involved in this, you know, as, as you have for years. And I've been thinking about what it's going to take. And, and you called it a tipping point. Yeah, that's what's been getting to me because I've been thinking, well, we're actually at that point now where it isn't just uh, hopeful, optimistic, 
random speculation, but it's beginning to get very, very real. I've been told that there have been attempts to bring down craft, that we've acted offensively against non-human craft. There have been instances and there are uh, certain techniques. Have human beings been hurt or killed by a non-human intelligence? While I can't get into the specifics because that would reveal uh, certain U.S. classified in, uh, operations, uh, I was briefed by a few individuals on the program that there were um, malevolent events like that. So uh, what I think would be nice for us is if uh, we turn the, the table a little bit and let me interview you a little bit about how you tipped to Dave Grush um, what you're going to have in your story that's so unique. And, um, and I think we should start with that. I think what a lot of people who have read the article that uh, Leslie Kane and Ralph Blumenthal wrote uh, will be thinking is, okay, well, it's great. I read it in print. Who is this guy exactly? Well, you put him on camera. How did you find him and get him to do that? I, I have to say my impressions of Dave Grush are not formed just by talking to Dave Grush. Uh, both Leslie and Ralph and I have done very methodical checking into his background. We've assessed his credibility. And more importantly, we've verified with many independent sources that he is who he says he is. He's basically the guy, he's one of the guys who quite literally was involved in putting together the presidential daily briefing for the President of the United States. He was cleared so highly with his top secret SCI compartmented clearance that he was given access to over 2000 special access programs. And before any of you leak to conclusions and assume that he's another Edward Snowden or a, a, another person who's breaking the law to bring this information to the public, the extraordinary thing about Dave Grush's revelations are that he is making them under the authorization of the Defense Office pre-publication security review. He has been approved by the US Department of Defense to do the interview he's done with me and with Leslie Kane and Ralph Blumenthal. I like to think, I'd hope, that this indicates a pleasant level of openness by the US Defense Department. But as Dave candidly has told me, he believes it's more a necessity for the US Defense Department He's determined he wants to tell his story. And I think they see the Dopser review as a way of trying to control his narrative. But it's hugely significant because essentially he has put what he wants to talk about to the US Defense Department and he has received approval from the US Defense Department to talk about what he reveals to both Leslie Kane and Ralph Blumenthal and myself. I, I think that's quite huge, and it's a very pleasant degree of openness from a department that, frankly, I think we've had good cause to be very critical of in the past. That's one of the reasons why I do think we're about to step into the unknown. But what he did do is he worked for the UAP task force. He was perhaps the lead investigator for the body that the Pentagon set up to investigate the phenomenon at the request of the Congress. And it was he who was authorized with all of his compartmented security clearances to go and find the code name programs that do exist that contain what he alleges involve, as we've read today in the debrief, a crash retrieval program, recovered non-human technology that is secretly held by the United States. Why do you know it's exotic? Uh, based on uh, the very specific properties that I was briefed on, you know, isotopic ratios that would have to be engineered for it to be um, at those levels, but also just extremely uh, uh, strange, heavy atomic metal, you know, high up in the periodic table um, arrangements that um, we don't understand, you know, what the emergent properties are, but there's just a very strange mix of... Um, elements. So you're absolutely sure that the materials that these craft are made of are clearly not of this earth? Yeah, they're sophisticatedly engineered, um, certainly not by humans. I, I've, like you, in the last few weeks, Bryce, ever since I've first spoken to Dave, 
had trouble processing what he's been telling us. I've asked myself constantly, could he be some kind of disinformation stooge that's being put up by the Defence Department to co completely and egregiously mislead the UAP research community? So many people have vouched for him from the inside. I've never been fully candid, even with you, my friend, about the people that I've been talking to. But you might remember I told you once that I, in my book as well, I, I talked about a guy called Nat Kobitz. Yep. And Nat was one of the chief geeks for the US Navy. And he was dying. And he gave me leads. And I've never spoken about this before, but he gave me leads that led me to people working in what they purported was a secret program involving the retrieval and attempted reverse engineering of non-human technology. And I've been speaking to those people for some time. And it was they who told me about Dave Grush. And it was they who vouched about Dave Grush to me. So unless there's been an elaborate disinformation program going back to maybe even three years, I think this guy's for real. He's one of the highest intelligence officers ever to come forward. In fact, I think he is the highest intelligence officer ever to come forward on the issue of UAPs. And one of the reasons why I think we should give him huge credibility is because I've been able to confirm, and so have Leslie and Ralph, that Dave's allegations made in a secret hearing to the Inspector General of the Intelligence Community have been verified to be both urgent and credible. And for that reason, his allegations were referred urgently to the oversight committees of the Congress. You know, Ross, there's so much to unpack there. Let's start with the simplest one. You said at the very beginning that he had filed for a DOPSA review. You better explain that so people know what you're talking about there. Sure. A, a DOPSA review is a Defense Office Pre-Publication Security Office review where they basically look at what people want to write. And if you are a compartmented, top secret, cleared person, you are legally obliged to get anything that you want to publish checked by the Defense Department. Now, I do emphasize it's not a verification that the statements that the person's making are authentic. You know, theoretically, Dave could basically put to them a whole series of false allegations that he wants to allege, and they could theoretically verify those false allegations because none of them breach national security. What I find very, very interesting, and this is revealed in Leslie Kane's story, is that there are things that are authorized in the DOPSA review by the Defense Department that are simply breathtaking. Oh. They are they are authorizing Dave to talk about historical crash retrievals. You know, okay. Um, and first I, and of I all, just, this is, just to emphasize, yeah. when I say historical crash retrievals, I'm talking about, well, I would call it alien, so would you, but the term they use is non-human intelligence. Sure. They're talking about non-human intelligence technology, NHI technology. And we're going to be hearing that term a lot, NHI. Let's go back to the DOPSA review for a moment. I assume this is the same kind of thing that Lou Elizondo has just gone through for his book uh, in That's order to true. publish it. The other thing about it is uh, you do say to yourself, why on earth would the Defense Department let him come forward and talk about such things if they're also at the same time denying that they have any information about it? Well, part of it is, of course, that um, if they turned him down, if they said, you can't go talk about that, that, I believe, triggers an entire process where he has to, you know, there's a back and forth and it's public. Is that right? And so therefore, one incentive for the Defense Department to say, go talk about whatever you want there is they don't want that or they did not want that kind of back and forth. First and foremost, let me emphasize, Dave Grush is a patriot. He strongly believes that the information he holds, which he has acquired by doing his investigations as a member of the UAP task force, 
He believes that those allegations should be public information. We're in a competition with their adversaries to understand this. And it's a, it's a multi-decade Cold War that uh, has been under our nose for so long. And, you know, there is no good way to level the playing field and hold other nation states accountable if they're doing unethical or illicit uh, activity as it relates to this subject. And I think the obtuse secrecy is actually putting us in a very dangerous position where uh, a country might make a breakthrough that say we, um, that's an adversary of ours. And it is so destabilizing. There's certain things that he thinks the public should not know. And I respect that. I completely understand that. And I can understand to some degree why for many years, especially during the Cold War, this was kept secret. Um, but, 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 but what I do sure. think is, sorry, let's, I'll, I'll let you talk. I'm sorry. No, no. Uh, I was just going to say, uh, by way of vouching for all this, I personally have sat and watched you interview Dave Grush for, I believe, seven hours, two separate events over seven hours. And I have heard him say things in those interviews that you conducted that exceed by a lot what's in the uh, Leslie Kane and Ralph Blumenthal story. He obviously, uh, you know, he spoke at, at, at depth about certain things that I have to tell you, I thought were shocking. Um, not so much shocking in that I couldn't comprehend how they could be true, but shocking in that somebody was actually saying them in a public forum on camera. So one question I had for you is, if he, even if he's followed this DOPSA process, my question is, is he still in any danger of being, say, arrested? Because uh, obviously the reason he became this first whistleblower approved is that there's government legislation that came out of the Defense um, Authorization Act. So what risk was Dave Grush taking by speaking for seven hours to you on camera about some things that exceed just crash wreckage? What's the deal? Uh, any whistleblower. I mean, I, I, I feel as an investigative journalist that the one thing that we always have to respect is the person who decides to come out from the shadows and speak publicly about what they perceive to be a wrong or an ill-doing and exposing it publicly. It is the most courageous thing that any patriot, any public servant can do. And, and sadly, one of the great lessons of journalism is whistleblowers often get screwed. They get treated really badly. And so in many ways, Mr. Grush's best defense is to speak publicly and to get what he knows out there and to ensure that it's quickly, publicly investigated and aggressively investigated. So what he's doing is he's putting his cards on the table. He's revealing what he knows. And yes, you're absolutely right, my friend. Uh, I'm aware of Leslie and Ralph's story and I know that what we have goes an enormous amount further. And the reason why Dave's done that is because he wants you the public to know. And moreover, he wants you, the public, to tell your congressional representative and your senators, the president, and anybody who's listening, including the mainstream media, that they need to make this a forefront issue. I beg this audience to get out there, get the story on social media, and back this person. Because the worst thing can, that can happen is that somebody like he comes forward. It's such a courageous act for a person to do this, to come out from the shadows and speak about this. The worst thing that can happen is if, as I'm sad to say, some in the mainstream media have elected not to give him coverage and to ignore what he's got to say. So it's incumbent on you, everybody listening here, you have power. This is a really important moment in history because what you can do is you can write to your congressman, your congresswoman, your representatives and say, I want this in a public hearing. I want these witnesses deposed. Because the key thing is, one of the things that Dave reveals in the story the debrief is publishing, is that there are witnesses that he has given evidence about who have also backed his evidence in testimony in secret to the Inspector General of the Intelligence Community. Those people have been deposed. They have literally given evidence under oath and been questioned about what they know about the program, about a crash retrieval operation. Now, the Congress 
has not heard the full story. And one of the things that was frustrating the media's attempt to investigate what Dave Grush was saying was that some of what he reveals is in fact so highly protected, so highly compartmented, that many congressional sources in senators' offices and congressional representatives' office were not able to corroborate that they'd even become aware of his information. This is such protected information. It has been kept from the public, I think improperly, illegally, and criminally. Criminal offences have been committed, very grave criminal offences, and this sure. needs investigation. I think this is a bigger scandal than Watergate oh. or Iran-Contra. It is massive, and there are people who will have to be criminally prosecuted for what they've been doing. Terrible things, Bryce. Terrible things have been done in the name of national security to protect this secret. I want to come back to all of that. It is um, it, it it gives um, some strength to what our friend, the departed Stanton Friedman, uh, called things. He said it was a cosmic Watergate, and uh, it is a cosmic Watergate that actually buries the term Watergate. I mean, Watergate is going to look like small, small potatoes compared to what's about to come roaring down the the pike here. Now, let me make a point of clarification, and then we're going to go back into that that criminal aspect. Um, you said, Ross, that uh, the debrief is publishing this. And I think that's a wise distinction. They are acting as publishers, not reporters here. And uh, you may be too too nice a guy to toot your own horn, but I'm going to here. I want everyone to understand something. Um, you're about to, you've already seen something written about Dave Grush. Uh, it was published in the debrief, but the reporters behind it are um, Leslie Kane and Ralph Blumenthal, who basically have allowed the debrief to publish their report, but they are not part of the reporting. And I say this with no ill will toward the debrief because I have many friends there, but that's the reality of it. And in the same way, News Nation will be acting as the vehicle to transmit your interview with Dave Grush, but they did not report it either. You are the reporter of it. So when people want to get into who's responsible for this, whether they want to give you blame or credit, it is my pal Ross Coulthard here, who I've literally heard about this for a year talking to you, uh, not by name, but uh, I've heard you chasing this story. And I know that Leslie and Ralph have chased it. So my hat, which I don't have on right now, of course, would be tipped to the three of you. And I I, I appreciate that the publishing that has gone on, uh, both with News Nation on television and, and the debrief, but uh, you guys are the reporters here. Now, let's go back to this, this issue that you just raised. Is the reason that there is reticence and pushback on just coming clean about this partially or completely, in your view, uh, something that comes be comes about because there are crimes that have been committed to keep the secret and there are still living people who might face penalties for it? Is that what you're saying or suggesting? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think there are people who will go to jail if U.S. law is heeded. I, I really do. I mean, I'm, I'm absolutely shocked by what's been revealed. And frankly, if what's revealed over the next week doesn't force Congress and the mainstream media into an extremely aggressive investigation for the first time of this issue. I'm talking about church commission style inquiries. If that doesn't happen, America might as well just declare itself an authoritarian regime and give up pretending to be a democracy. <laughs> strong, uh, strong stuff, Ross. Those are strong words. No, I'm, I'm really confronted about what I'm aware of, Bryce, and there's some stuff that I'm not publishing out of responsibility, you know, national security concerns, and not all of it has come from David Grush. I'm, I'm really quite shocked. Uh, in some cases, I, I'm scared about what I'm aware of. Um, one of the things I really want to emphasise, my friend, and I'm probably jumping the gun on this with you, but you can tell me off later. I, I think that the real story behind the Dave Grush decision to go with the debrief is, and the fact that 
I'm doing this on News Nation, which is a, a very new network, a very aggressive and exciting new network. But the fact that it's not going in the Washington Post or the New York Times or CBS, ABC, NBC is an indictment of mainstream investigative media. This whole story, the failure of the American media to recognize that all this time, this has been a real story. It hasn't been a confabulation. It hasn't been an invention or a wacky tinfoil hat story. It's been reality. To hear Dave Grush say, as he does, that he knows that there's been a deliberate disinformation campaign against the American people to keep this secret from them is, in my book, shocking. And to hear the account that he gives of the crimes that have been committed, serious crimes, very, very serious crimes, and to know that media were approached in the making of this story by Leslie and Ralph to get this published in major newspapers. And you know what? They, they didn't get a spine. They failed. They failed horribly to recognize the significance of this story. And they allowed themselves to be led by their nose by people inside the Pentagon who are still trying to suppress this story. And what I would say is God bless the good people inside the Defense Department and inside the intelligence community who made the decision to back Dave Grush and Leslie and Ralph and provided them with the secondary and tertiary corroboration that they needed. Because there is absolutely no question in this story that it is nailed down tight. I've made stories with the New York Times and the Washington Post. I've written stories that have been vetted by their editors. I know how hard it is to get a story through those newspapers. But by golly, there is absolutely no doubt in my book that Dave Grush's story ought properly to be featured right now on the front page of the New York Times. And I am calling the New York Times and the Washington Post gutless cowards for their failure mm. to follow this story up. This is, I, I cannot believe how badly they have abrogated their responsibility as journalists. What they've done is they've allowed themselves to be fed. They've allowed themselves to be put on the nipple of the intelligence briefers that feed journalists stories. And they've, they've ignored deliberately, they've chosen cravenly to ignore a real story that the American public is demanding to know about, that Congress has mandated by legislation should be known about, and they have contrived in the conspiracy to cover this up. I think the, the editors of the New York Times and the Washington Post, and indeed, Many of the editors of mainstream newspapers around America ought to be taking a long, hard look at themselves after this story because they have failed with a yes. capital F. This is a story of failure. And I, I'm angry. I'm really angry about this because knowing what I know and knowing what you know now, Bryce, what do you think? I mean, I, I'm, I'm sorry to turn the tables on you, but as I sat there and heard what Dave Grush told us, and what has already been revealed in Leslie Kane's debrief article, I got angrier and angrier. It's just appalling that this has been kept secret. Uh, well, ditto to all of that. It's kind of ironic. You called them gutless cowards, and I had written down here cowardly sissies. So I guess we're thinking along the same lines. I'm going to name the names one more time for people that didn't, st or, uh, institutions that didn't step up. You got the New York Times, you got the Washington Post. But you also have The Hill and Politico, who um, also uh, did not step up. And, uh, you know, I can't feel very good about that. I'm not just mad at the government, although I am. And by the way, one of the things you're going to learn in Ross's reporting is that it's a 90-year cover-up, not the one that we've been saying might be 80. It's a 90-plus year cover-up. I'm angry at the government for not being able to level with the people about this. I don't know what the ultimate truth is, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, but I know that we should have it by now for sure. But I'm also upset as you are and angry and, and pissed off that, that actual parts of legacy media and even new media uh, got nervous when presented with this article that Kane and Blumenthal uh, had, had uh, written and uh, couldn't bring themselves to get it out there. So, I'm not happy. 
definitely not happy. Now, can I say, I want, can I say, well, can I say one thing I'm really happy about? And yeah. I, I, I'm not just saying this to be nice. I want to pay credit to News Nation and indeed the debrief yes. for having the balls to run this story. They Amen. made a they've made a courageous decision as fairly small new media companies to take on the national security establishment. And, and that's courageous. I mean, I, it's funny. I, 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 uh, I was thinking earlier on this week, Bryce, about a guy I really respect and admire, Daniel Ellsberg, the guy who leaked the Pentagon Papers. And I was thinking what would happen if today Daniel Ellsberg walked into the offices of the Washington Post with the Pentagon Papers that, for anybody out there who doesn't know, they, they revealed the failure of US strategic policy in Vietnam, which had been kept and suppressed and kept secret from the American public for no good reason. And the Washington Post agonized for weeks about whether to run yes. it. And then they made the courageous decision, despite the fact that they were national security documents, to run them. And you know what? I don't think they would run it today. I really don't. Right. And, and I think that what this story signifies isn't just a tipping point in disclosure. It also signifies a tipping point in the relevance, the growing relevance of podcasts, vodcasts like ours, new media that the Pentagon and the intelligence community cannot suppress. They might try and stomp on them and try and buy them off by offering them stories and giving them access to information that other places don't get. But ultimately, what's really interesting here is the success of new organizations like News Nation and The Debrief, which are breaking stories that, frankly, the mainstream media, the legacy media, have completely abrogated and failed to cover. It possibly could be that this... Uh legacy media or the mainstream media, whatever we want to call them, maybe they feel like they have too much to lose and they don't want to be first. Uh, that's why it was surprising in 2017 that the New York Times published the original Canem Blumenthal and Helen Thomas uh, article. Uh, uh, was it Helen Thomas? Is that, do I have that? Uh, right? Helene, Helene Cooper. Cooper, excuse me, Helen Thomas, another reporter out of Washington in years past. Listen, you brought up Daniel Ellsberg. Uh, just today, there was an article out in Politico that is titled Daniel Ellsberg is dying and he has some final things to say. Um, Daniel Ellsberg was possibly the most significant whistleblower in, in US history. He's the guy that got the Pentagon Papers uh, published. And uh, this is what he said in that interview. He's talking about the value of whistleblowers. And he said, when everything is at stake, excuse me, when everything is at stake, I'm talking about nuclear war implicitly here, but climate is the same when we're facing a pretty ultimate catastrophe, when we're on the edge of blowing up the world over Crimea or Taiwan or Bakhmut, from the point of view of a civilization and the survival of eight or nine billion people, when everything is at stake, can it be worth even a small chance of having a small effect by being a whistleblower? And the answer is, of course. Of course it can be worth that. You can even say it's obligatory. So let's just, uh, let's tip to Daniel Ellsberg and the great uh, contribution he made. And, and I wish more people will look at that and see how it was done and, and try to bring it to this. I, I do want to uh, get back on track on, on our interview or your interview rather with um, Dave Grush. When I watched it uh, being recorded and then later as it was cut into various things, I thought, wow, he is definitely saying some outrageous things. And when people hear it, they'll they'll hear them. Uh, but there were some things uh, that he said off camera as well that were kind of outrageous. Um, but he also said, and you were very diligent in pressing him on certain of these issues. And he said many times that there were places where he literally could not say, but he had delivered all the relevant material to the proper committees. All right. He said that many times. And I think he was talking about the fact that, as I understand it, he has spoken uh, under oath in classified hearings to the Senate Intelligence Committee and I believe even a House committee where he has told not only the story he told you in those six to seven hours, but all of the stuff about locations, people, names of uh, projects, et cetera, where he has laid those details out and told the Senate and the House, hey, folks, if you really want to get kick the rocks over and find out what's underneath, this is where you go. Has Dave Grush uh, offered up a credible roadmap then to the 
uh, American government for how to get out of this? Yes. Good. Moving on. No, seriously, uh, am I right about that? That he's spoken uh, under oath for over 11 hours to Congress? Correct. I mean, if you think about that, I, 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 with him naming specifics of all the things that he he was very proper about, it's almost like there was a line given him with this Dobsa review, and he knew he could go up to there, but he wasn't supposed to go there. That part he knows, is he knows much more than he's told us. I'm Absolutely. Sure. So when people watch these interviews as they roll out over the next uh, uh, few days, and, and frankly, probably over weeks, I want everyone to understand that. He is also stating that he has given the details about where what these reverse engineering programs are, crash retrieval programs are, and he's told names and dates and, and all the stuff that Congress would need if they really wanted to go look into this in a serious way. So um, I, I think we are at an inflection point and, and Dave Grush is probably going to go down in history as someone who will help uh, usher it in. I mean, so let me just ask you this. Where do you see Dave Grush fitting into the grand story of disclosure that admittedly has been going on since at least 1947? OK, Dave is not a direct witness. He has not touched a flying saucer or right. been inside the program, but he's done the next best thing. What he's done is he's found the documents, the photographs, and the people who do. And they have given their evidence under oath, particularly to the Inspector General of the Intelligence Community, who found his allegations to be urgent and credible. And because of that, they were referred on to the oversight committees of the Congress including the Senate Intelligence Committee, one of the most powerful committees in the Congress, and the House Intelligence Committee. And I know that a large number of the congressmen and senators perhaps didn't attend the hearings, but to cover themselves, they sent their counsel, their lawyers, uh, to observe and senior staffers who had security clearances. And it's interesting because I think what's happening here is there's been a very, very careful attempt by the uh, politicians to keep themselves at a careful distance. Because I think what's happening now is the Congress really doesn't know what to do about Dave Grush's evidence. He's wrong-footed them. He's come forward and said, I know all about the program. This is where the craft are. These are the people you need to talk to. These are the code names of the various programs that are secreted inside special access programs inside the Defence Department. These are the people responsible in the Defence Department. This is the aerospace companies that are involved. He's given them chapter and verse. Now, what I'm really worried about is Congress needs to show a spying. Yeah. They need to develop a new set of balls and start investigating this issue properly. And I think the only way to do this now is to bring it out into the public, because I don't think the politicians can be trusted to do this in QT. I don't think they're going to do it if, unless they're forced by the public and particularly by mainstream media pressure. So what's really interesting here is until my interview became Probably, I don't think the intelligence community knew that I'd done an interview with Dave Grush until this morning. We've kept it very, very secret. Dave came to speak to us in absolute secrecy, and News Nation put on a deserted warehouse with high security, and we made very, very sure that the people that attended kept their mouths shut. And I think, I'm hoping that the intelligence community is wrong footed and surprised because I think. There are certain people in the Defence Department who think, great, we shut down the New York Times, we managed to hose down the Washington Post, Politico, The Hill, and you know who, who cares? They might take the arrogant view, who cares about the debrief? I've got huge respect for the debrief, but it's not a mainstream newspaper. They may think that they can marginalise it inside the, the world of UAP research. This is where you, the public, become important. This is where citizen journalism can really help. This is where people need to start writing to their congressperson and saying, I care about this issue. I want an inquiry. Write to the New York Times. 
demand to know why they wouldn't cover this story. Why is their national security reporters being bought off with cosy little drops about the Ukraine? You know, I'm sorry, I've, I've been there, I've done that, I've seen how it works. I know what intelligence community people do. They buy off a reporter by giving them stories. And this is what they've done with the big mainstream papers. Mm -hmm. The editors have made the judgment that it's too dangerous to run the story, otherwise they're going to get cut off the drip. And this is the biggest story ever. I mean, seriously, if what Dave Grush mm -hmm. is saying is true, we are talking about one of the top intelligence officials in the US government, a guy who used to hand deliver mm. intelligence briefings, the daily intelligence briefing to the West Wing of the White House. He was the guy that did it. We're talking about one of those top officials cleared for over 2000 special access programs coming forward and saying non human intelligence right. is real. And moreover, the US has been concealing the existence of retrieved non-human alien technology for decades it's breathtaking it's as breathtaking. a story it's I, absolutely I mean, Ross, breathtaking i mean again uh, congratulations to you for doing this the old-fashioned way as a journalist who cultivates sources who uh doesn't blow the sources uh and and works the story but i just want to highlight one thing you said here because i believe it needs to be said twice the ICIG stands for the Intelligence Community Inspector General, the I ICIG, do. right? And as Ross said, after Dave Grush spoke to them at, at that office, uh, they put in their uh, cover letter, I believe, to the Congress that his comments were, quote, urgent and credible. Now, Inspector Generals don't just throw words around for no good reason. Urgent and credible. So I believe that we should take that the inspector general at its word and say, this is an urgent case. The reason Dave Grush has come forward is that there is an urgency to grappling with this issue. He knows a bit about that. And credible, that's an, a comment on not only what Dave is saying, but Dave himself. So, um, and again, as I said, I sat, uh, uh, thanks to Ross, I sat and got to know this guy a little bit. And I will tell you, he strikes me as incredibly credible and the story he tells as incredibly urgent. So, uh, and, and for example, I, you have stated several times non-human intelligence, which is, of course, NHI is sort of the new way to talk about it. And, and, and I, I buy into that. I mean, we don't, as he states, he, he doesn't want to talk about origin because they're not entirely sure of that, about that. Uh, so alien in everybody's mind is, well, they come from out there. Well, there may be other explanations. So, no, but, but it is, clear that this is non-human intelligence, but he has also used the plural, right? He has used the plural phrase, non-human intelligences. And that means there's more than one out there. And that also is a pretty huge headline to me. More on that in my interview on right. News right. Nation coming up. <laughs> yeah. So why don't we, uh, uh, yeah, I don't want this to be a giant tease because I'm looking forward to the world seeing you talk to this guy. Can I have one serve yeah. on the way out, Bryce? But you can. I don't mean to be unkind, but I think people, particularly those in the mainstream media who are looking for an angle, they need to go back and look at the testimony of Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick mm -hmm. to the Congress. He told Senator Gillibrand in evidence, not that long ago, only a few weeks ago, that there was no credible evidence to support contentions that there's evidence of extraterrestrial life visiting this planet. Now, Mr. Grush is quite clear that he's not saying it's necessarily extraterrestrial. He has various theories about that. You'll hear more about that on the News Nation story. But what he is clear about is that he does not think that Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick gave a truthful and accurate record to Congress. And indeed, he believes that Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick knows most of what he's revealing in his interview with both Ralph and Leslie, and particularly in his interview with me. And I think the American public, the world needs to ask, why did the US Defense Department put a bureaucrat, a scientist in a position who appears willing to either unwittingly or knowingly mislead the Congress?
And what's Senator Gillibrand going to do about the fact that she has so clearly been misled in evidence that was publicly televised before the Congress? Was Senator Gillibrand a conspirator in the conspiracy to mislead the American public? I'm not saying she was, but I think people should be asking that question. I think she needs to clarify whether she knows about what Mr. Grush has told the Congress and whether or not she's going to do anything about it. Because now you have elected officials and very senior publicly appointed bureaucrats being told things in open public hearing that I know for a fact are complete lies. I look forward to seeing how legacy media responds to this story and whether they will apply the same level of urgency that they applied to chasing congressmen and uh, senators down hallways to ask them about the debt limit. Will, the, will they apply that same interest to this story? And, and honestly, at this point, I think it's big enough that it could overcome that. But so far, I've been let down. Nobody seems to be addressing I'm, it. I'm not holding my breath. I'm, I'm not holding my breath. Yeah, I, I, reckon, I reckon they're going to try and whitewash it and ignore it. I, really I, do. I, I do too, but I do think um, that Dave Grush takes us to that, that the, the, you know, the two roads. And which one are you going to take? Because at this point, it's clear you either have to double down on secrecy and find innovative new ways to try to put this back in the box, or you're going to have to move forward with some new kind of transparency. Because I don't think you can just put Dave Grush out there for who he is and know that there are other whistleblowers behind him who have also talked to Congress and who are about to come forward. I don't know how you can keep putting that in a box. So yeah. we'll find out. Yeah. I, I, I absolutely agree with you. And, and just to emphasize, Dave Grush is just the beginning. Yeah, there are, there are people inside the program, and I know because I'm talking to them, who want to come forward and who are waiting to see how Congress and the American media treat people who come forward with revelations of criminality and wrongdoing at the highest level of the US government. Is the US government still a functioning democracy? Will it allow itself to, to expose the wrongdoing that lies behind the concealment of the crash retrieval program? Why has an illegal disinformation operation, which was essentially banned by the uh, Church Commission inquiry after the CIA revelations of illegal intelligence operations against US citizens in the 1970s. Why has an illegal intelligence operation to disinform the American public and the world been run for so long by different intelligence agencies? And why have people tolerated this inside the US government? And why aren't congressmen, congresswomen and senators asking questions about this? They know about it. I know they know about it. I know that there are very senior people in the Gang of Eight who are very well aware of the Dave Grush allegations. Why are they sitting on this information? And moreover, why aren't the national security reporters for all of the major TV networks and all of the major newspapers not being tasked by their editors to get out there and start banging down the doors and cracking this story. Because the great newspapers that I love and admire, the Washington Post and the New York Times, they need to understand they failed so far on this story and they need to get out there and, and prove that they can still do it. This is a really important moment for the American public and for the world. There are technologies, there are discoveries, there are scientific advancements that can be developed as a result of the exposure of what the American government knows. And, and I know because there are scientists that are talking to me who are bitterly frustrated that it has been kept secret because the secrecy they say has frustrated advancements that could help all of humanity. Right. It's true, Bryce. It's true. Uh, I, I remember some of our phone calls uh, in the early days of this and just hanging up and thinking, okay, well, we're into a new world now. Um, and, and, and clearly, you know, we talked before we went on whether we wanted to talk about this NASA news conference uh, that they had. I almost don't want to talk about it right now, but I will if you want to make a few final comments. But then we should come back and, and, um, and close on the Dave Crush story. 
Actually, I just realised that the comments that uh, Kirkpatrick made about um, the lack of any credible evidence for ET life were actually made at the NASA news conference. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry. Let's call it what it is. It's a deliberate cover-up. Yeah. It's a lie. Now, I don't know who's lying. I don't know whether he's being disinformed or misinformed. But somebody very high up is lying. They think they can continue to mislead and disinform the American public. And frankly, you know what? They probably can if the American public don't start rattling the cage. I am amazed how easily the American public are distracted these days by social media nonsense and by stories that frankly don't matter. This is a story that matters. This is a story that could revolutionize our understanding of human history and our ability to make technological breakthroughs that could transform human society. And frankly, there's no good reason for the continued secrecy. It's time this story was told. Right. I, I you know, I'll just give a quick take on the uh, NASA thing. Watching it, there were some moments where I thought, well, these people, you know, this person gets it. This person gets it, but a lot of they don't get it, or they're all they're all not addressing it directly. Talking about Sean Kirkpatrick, for example, he actually said, "Well, we have fifty to a hundred ish new reports each month. That's very precise, a hundred ish uh, new reports each month, and that's at the uh, Aero office." But he said the number of those sightings, which are quote possibly really anomalous, end quote, are two to five percent of the total database. Well, instead of talking about, well, gosh, there's only 5% that are anomalous, so really nothing to see here, they should be focusing on those 5% because we, we don't care about the ones that are being identified. We want to know what is going on with the anomalous ones. And then, and, you know, and, again, this is kind of ironic because um, I've already attacked Senator Kelly for his some obtuse comments about UAP in past episodes, but Scott Kelly uh, was on this uh this panel for NASA, decades of uh, experience. But what did he choose to make as his big statement? He told a story about how he and a co-pilot were uh, near Virginia Beach, and they were convinced that they had flown by a UFO. And uh, Kelly said, I didn't see it. We turned around and we went to look at it. Turns out it was Bart Simpson, a balloon, which of course got some polite laughter and, and all that. And again, please guys, that's not helpful. We're not interested in the ones that look like Bart Simpson. We want you looking into the ones that are truly anomalous, and we want some answers. And I think that 10 times more than I did before I met Dave Grush. Dave Grush to me, uh, as again, as I said, he's not only super credible to me having met him, but he's super credible to the inspector general. So, you know, this is what we should be digging into right now. And I look forward to that potentially happening. So, Ross, let's each uh, take a moment for some last comments here. You go, my friend. Okay, there's one thing I want to point out about the NASA event that I think yeah. is really special. Now, as you know, I've copped a fair bollocking online from people who were very, very skeptical about my friend Jim Marlin from Texas, who has a mysterious metallic oh. sphere. Okay, now I note with great fun that Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick admitted that one of the most interesting observations is that there are genuine anomalies with metallic spheres that have been seen all over the world doing unusual maneuvers. Now, I'll just leave you with this thought. If the US government doesn't know a great deal about these objects, how in bloody hell does Sean Kirkpatrick know that these spheres are metallic? How, how does he know that? Oh, good point. I know a bit more than I'm letting on. And I know they know a lot more than they're telling the American public. Why did he say they were metallic? Funny that. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you, in honor of that, that's why I put a metallic <laughs> I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> uh, mine, if, if actually, I was just saying, if, if mine starts to levitate, we're going to have another story to break here. Uh, that is not one of the alien or or uh, anomalous metal metallic balls. However, though, I have to say, that was for me kind of an interesting thing to come out of this because people are very interested in this. You actually have spoken to people who have encountered these things and actually have them rolling around in their houses right now. Sure. And then we've admitted that they're all over the world. So I don't think we're going to be laughing about 
metallic balls much longer because some of them were reported apparently going twice the speed of sound uh, or even hovering. How, how does a metallic ball do that? I mean, who's got that tech right now? I'm not really sure that anybody here on earth does have it. So yeah, I think yeah, there's I, a lot of, I think I, what I hope my friend is that after the revelations in Leslie and Ralph's story today, and the coming revelations on News Nation that I'm putting in my interview with Dave Grush, the exclusive television interview with Mr. Grush, I'm hoping there will be many, many questions that the mainstream media and representatives of the Congress will start putting to the Defence Department and the intelligence community. And frankly, the President needs to be asked as well. Oh. It's, it's, I mean, I, I was shocked recently. I tweeted about the fact that it was quite obvious that Joe Biden was being fed questions that were pre-prepared by the media. Just to what extent is the US media collaborating in making things comfortable for the executive arm of government? My job as a journalist yeah. is to make governments uncomfortable and to ask uncomfortable questions. And the whole issue of alleged crash retrievals, non-human intelligence is an uncomfortable issue. But I can tell you, after this week, the public will know definitively that there has been an active, deliberate, real disinformation program run against the American public, which I believe is a criminal breach of undertakings that were given in the wake of the Church Commission investigations into the CIA's illegal activities in the 1970s. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Mm. There, is, there is so much more to come. I am shocked by what I now know. And it's not just from Dave Grush. If they try to neutralise Mr Grush, don't worry. There's far more to come. And, and that's an excellent concluding statement. I got a little housekeeping to do here. Um, just so everyone understands, there was an article written by Leslie Kane and Ralph Blumenthal. And uh, Ross here is uh, the interviewer and the journalist behind what is going to be on uh, News Nation sometime in the next week. And I believe their show will be about an hour. And so Ross interviewing this uh, gentleman, Dave Grush, is part of that hour. But uh, the amount of time that Dave is on the air compared to the amount of time he talked is small. So I just want you to know there are uh, Ross and I, particularly Ross, were committed to trying to get the full interview out in one way or another, because I think people deserve to see Dave Grush at length, look him in the eye and see what they think about the guy. Do they think he's telling the truth? I do when I watch him, but it'll be interesting to see what other people do. Um, so again, there's that need, need to know raw tape uh, uh, that, that is part of the News Nation coverage. Hopefully that will find a full light of day soon. And then there was also an interview that we did literally here in my house with Dave Grush uh, uh, that went on for three hours. Ross uh, conducted that interview. And in some way, uh, we're going to put that out, too, so that people can see Dave and, and judge for themselves. And when you start to see these things come out, think about this. There are questions he answers. Um, do they have bodies? Uh, have people been killed by contact with UFOs? Have people been killed because of the cover up? These are questions he actually steps up and puts answers to. And I can't wait uh, for people to see what I have seen and what Ross has discovered. So I, I close my part here by just saying strong uh, thumbs up to you, Ross. What you've done is extraordinary. I'm proud of Leslie and Ralph for staying in the game and uh, following up their 2017 article. And uh, we are in a brave new world. And full marks to Dave Grush the whistleblower yes. who has the courage to come forward. A very courageous man, and as you pointed out, a patriot and someone who deserves to be in the history books. More to Absolutely. come. That was UFO whistleblower David Grush revealing in a News Nation exclusive that he believes the government has been covering up the existence of alien life. But can he be believed? Let's bring in Bryce Zabel. He's a writer producer, investigative journalist, covers UFOs, actually does a podcast with the guy doing the interview with Grush. Uh, Bryce, good to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And, you know, I, I really want to call out how great I thought your introduction was, because 
it's not about little green men anymore. It's not about just lights in the sky. But you're proving right now with this coverage that News Nation is doing and yourself, uh, Chris, is that the stigma for this whole topic needs to go away. We need to take it on like any other story and, and get to the bottom of it. Yeah. And I mean, the part that is I find unacceptable is if they have something that proves or disproves this, they should tell us. Because I, I just think it's malfeasance. I don't even think it's misfeasance. I don't even think it's simple negligence. I don't even think it's discretion. They are intentionally doing something that has three quarters of the population interested. And if they could debunk that, they should. That's transparency. Now, uh, let's do our own practice of it here. Sure. Uh, what do you know about Grush and why should we trust him? Well, I know about Grush because uh, my partner in that podcast, Ross Coltart, the man who's doing the interview, is someone I've been in contact with, obviously, on a lot of these issues and a lot of the sources that he's had over uh, the time that we've known each other. So I've I've seen the Grush story coming. Um, I did spend a couple of days with Dave Grush uh, in May, uh, uh, the day before you guys actually taped the News Nation interview, and I was there for the News Nation interview. And um, I, th I think Grush is the real deal, and I, I look forward to people putting as much attention on checking him out as they can, because I think he checks out. Wasn't fired, uh, doesn't have beef that we know about. The government hasn't come forward and said he was fired or has beef. And in fact, he is telling us the truth as far as we know about going to DOD for pre-publication clearance and he was told not to talk about certain things. Is that your understanding as well? Well, that's what the, it's called the DOPSA document. And it basically allows him to talk uh, about certain things. Now, it's a dangerous game for a person uh, like Dave Grush because that puts a line there. And he has to, as he's answering questions for Ross or yourself in the future, uh, he has to wonder whether he's going over that line or not. So he's got, uh, you know, he's he's obviously being watched by the government to make sure that he stays on the right side of what they're allowing him to talk about. But I think it is pretty wild that the the government has said, you know, go ahead, Dave, tell your story. And that's exactly what he's doing. And it's interesting. I just I'm not sure people even understand this. In addition to all the credentials this guy has, he actually worked on the presidential daily briefing. He was one of the guys trusted to literally walk that briefing over to the White House. You know, this is not some guy who, you know, worked in the government 30 years ago who's coming forward with a YouTube video. This is a guy who was deeply involved in the intelligence community of the U.S. government up until April of this year. And he's telling a story that, as you've pointed out, is pretty radical. And yet there's a lot of... Uh, uh, reason to believe that it's true. Now, another contextual tool is corroboration. Uh, you're yes. saying separate from the guy, what he is talking about are things you have heard from other sources that are not Grush related. Absolutely. Um, listen, I, I started as a, a screenwriter looking into UFOs. Uh, and, and so I did a lot of research on it. And I, I've heard most of the things that he's talking about. And I've seen people talk about it. I've read about them. So you can actually think about this as a secret that's been in plain sight for quite a while. Uh, what's different is that we actually have an insider with the uh, merit and with the credentials of Dave Grush, who's willing to put his career and his own personal safety on the line to, to tell us about it. So I think it's kind of a heroic thing that he's doing. And, and I think it may very well turn out when we read the history books of the future, they're going to pinpoint uh, this time this very time right now that we're in and say, this is where things began to turn and people began to really take it seriously and get to the bottom of it. Well, look, at least Congress is doing an oversight hearing on it. Uh, yes. And we'll see what people tell them. Th there will be oversight of that. I've heard about it. I don't know anything about it. But Representative Burchett and Representative Luna on the oversight committee are, are very interested in this issue and they're taking the lead in this okay. issue. So there is going to be oversight on that? Uh, we plan on having a hearing uh, pertaining to that whole issue, but uh, Burchett and Luna are the two members of Congress that uh, are know more about this than, than I do. And I'm fine with them getting up there and saying, look, have we found things that wound up coming from other countries where at the time we didn't want people to know because we didn't want to let that country know that we had? Yes. And that's uh, the explanation for this and that and that. That's fine with me. I just think the time for silence on this is over because either you're covering something up that's nonsense, which is silly, uh, or 
you're covering something up that should matter as much to the American people as it does to any government agency. Um, so, Bryce Sable, uh, I appreciate your skepticism and you're going forward with it. And I see that picture of that, uh, that little statue of that alien you have over your shoulder, <laughs> known as an Emmy. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> so I, I respect that. Good placement. Good placement. Caught my eye. And we will continue the conversation. Uh, good luck. You're doing good work here. Thank you for doing it. Appreciate you. Good luck with the Need to Know podcast. And we'll be in touch. Take care.